Okay, James Patterson and short chapters. Uh, James Patterson is apparently the, le- the, lo- the biggest selling author in the world. I think by a, a fairly substantial margin. And I've tried a couple of his books. I don't know about you, but I'm not a I'm not a fan. They don't they don't do it for me. There's a lot of action. It feels somewhat contrived. There's coincidences. It just doesn't it doesn't do it for me. It, it's like watching a cheap movie or or, or cheap a B a B TV series or that type of thing. Uh, it doesn't really they don't challenge me. And, 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 but that's my opinion. I'm obviously in the minority. Uh, if you know, everywhere you go from Walmart to Costco to every airport to Safeway, his books are all over the place. So, uh, I was just, uh, down in Manhattan beach at the public library and they had a, the typical section they have in libraries where they're raising money for the, for a book foundation. And they have these 50 cent paperbacks. And I picked up a James Patterson. I took it back and I tried to learn from it. Again, I didn't enjoy it, but I tried to learn from it. Because obviously, if somebody's a leading selling author in the world, you don't want to discount the guy. Uh, his trademark is very short chapters. This particular book had, I think, over 140, might have been even 170, 175 chapters. Very short. Uh, so he writes in scenes, but they're, they're not even scenes. They're mini portions of scenes. You, you see where he breaks it. Well, he'll break chapter one into chapter two. And often... It's not really a, a typical scene break. It's just a continuation of the scene. And he figures this is a good place to stop chapter one, keep it short, and then go to chapter two. Some of the scenes, I mean, you could have a scene in one of his books that might be six or eight chapters long that a, that a normal author would, would, that would be one chapter, or maybe not even a, a complete chapter. It might be part of a chapter for an author, and they might move on from there within the same chapter. In Patterson's case, that though that one scene might take up six or eight or ten chapters, but again, you got to give him credit. You can't argue with the success, and it's easy to kind of scoff at that stuff. Uh, I saw an interview with him though, and he pointed out that when uh, when he finally had some success doing that, when he broke through, then many crime writers started writing shorter, <laughs> shorter chapters. So in any case, yeah, you have to do what you're comfortable with, but there's. It may be a reality, though. Um, uh, what you're doing, you're, to me, you're taking, you're, you're, you're kind of t- talking down to the reader and taking it uh, a notch down as far as their intelligent level goes. Um, but there was an article last week in The Guardian, a uh, fairly, fairly respected uh, paper. I believe it's British. It might have an American uh, uh version or section but the bottom line was the article the the gist of the article was that now researchers have determined and these are these are sophisticated researchers they've done neuroscience and they've looked at it many different ways but they've determined that most readers now tend to skim (laughs) so that's not great for novelists to hear that they skim And specifically, skimming is actually the new norm. That's what they call it. Specifically, that they use uh, with their eyes an F or a Z pattern when reading, which I can't quite picture, but I guess it must be the way the eyes cross the page. But the bottom line is what they tend to do, according to these researchers, most readers now, is they tend to sample the first line. And then they word spot through the rest of the text. Now, this may apply to a newspaper article more than a book. If they're into the middle of a novel, obviously, if they've gotten that far, they're going to read it. They want to find out what happens. But let's say they're in your look inside section of Amazon, your 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 sample that's that's dangled out there for readers to see on your Amazon page, and they can read you know the first couple of chapters or first ten percent in theory of your book. They're going to read that first line. And then they're going to word spot. Think about that. They're going to word spot through the rest of the text, see if any words jump out that they're interested in. That's pretty sobering to think. So it's something you, you really might consider if you want to uh, make any adjustments. To me, I, I'm just going to write it straight the way I think is best. I'm gonna, not going to cater to the new audience. That's To me, they're dumbed down 
because of uh, dependence on electronics. They've grown up with electronics. Uh, I'm sure most of these readers uh, that they're lumping in this category are, are in their 20s and maybe 30, you know, 20, teens and 20s, I'm going to guess. The first generation that truly grew up with electronics from day one in their life. And I think their brains are, are wired differently. I, I, you know, it's just my, <laughs> that's my suspicion. Uh, they don't absorb information the same way. But um, so you can effectively, you can dumb it down for them. Maybe you will get more readers, but I, I think that's a mistake. Uh, that's what Patterson does. He's, he's obviously done it before these studies have come out, but he figured, he did figure it out that, that readers tend to skip a lot of stuff. And, and the other person that figured out that readers tend to skip a lot is the great Elmore Leonard. To me, you know, Patterson couldn't hold <laughs> Leonard's, you know, whatever, uh, in a million years, but as a writer, but Leonard, um, did have those 10 rules, but they were way back in the eighties before electronics, before personal devices and cell phones and, and even before computers actually. And one of his rules was very basic. You leave out the parts that the readers tend to skip. So he was, he was prophetic. And in fact, he's, he's proving to be increasingly visionary, visionary today, uh, because that's abs it's, it's, it's ringing more and more true now. Uh, with this study, which this study bears out. But if you read Leonard, he, he writes in scenes. He's so much better than Patterson, so much more sophisticated. Um, and he doesn't, he doesn't shorten him. He just, when the scene ends, then he, then he ends it and moves on. He doesn't, he doesn't try to, to condense it into a two page chapter so he can have 175 of them in the book so the reader doesn't get bored. He just writes what's necessary. But the bottom line is he tends to leave out uh, excessive description and, and backstory and this and that uh, because he, he, he learned long ago that readers stick with the dialogue better than they stick with the other stuff. So if you're going to make any adjustments at all based on modern readership and based on you know, the success of James Patterson, uh, at the very least, you might examine your prose and make sure it's not it's that all your pro your non-dialogue prose is really necessary because uh, my guess is uh, a, a good portion of it is not okay.